The cratilic or convenient name argument is an argument for mythicism. Cratilic names are those that describe characteristics of the person. The word comes from Cratylus, who discussed the matter with Socrates in Plato's dialogue of the same name. The argument goes, the name Jesus means saviour. Clearly, therefore, Jesus is a highly convenient name for a saviour character. In real life, people are named before their characteristics are known, and therefore, while cratylic names do occur, they are coincidental and therefore rare. In fiction, on the other hand, characters are named with full knowledge of what their characteristics are, and therefore cratylic names are common. This means that people with cratylic names are more likely to be fictional than real, and therefore Jesus is more likely to be fictional than real. In modern society, this is certainly true. We can think of few real people with cratylic names. Russell Brain was a prominent British neurologist who wrote Brain's Clinical Neurologist, and I know of a surgeon called Mr Bone, but aside from that I struggle. In fiction, on the other hand, cratylic names are common. The Wacky Races is a good example, with characters like Dick Dastardly, Muttley, Penelope Pitstop, Sergeant Blast, Peter Perfect and Rufus Roughcut. The Mr Men also spring to mind. It is undeniably true that if you take a thousand real people and a thousand fictional people, there will be far more cratylic names in the fictional thousand. And conversely, if you are presented with a person whose reality is uncertain, having a cratylic name would argue that they were fictional. So let's see how this would pan out in first century Judea. Here is a list of the 15 most common male names in first century Judea, taken from Richard Borkham's book Jesus and the Eyewitnesses. These data were collected by Israeli scholar Tal Eilan from several sources, including the New Testament, early rabbinic sources, the Desert Papyri, the writings of the historian Josephus and ossuaries, stone boxes that were used to contain the bones of the dead and bore their names. In this data set, 99 out of 2,625 men were called Jesus. That's about 3.8%, or about 2 in 53. So there is a chance of 3.8% that a real Jesus got his cratylic name by coincidence. Not very high. There are counter-arguments, though. One possibility is that Jesus may not have been given that name at birth. It may have been a nickname applied to the character later, either during life or after his death, when he came to be seen as a saviour figure. Some definitions of historicity require that Jesus was called Jesus during his lifetime, but I have not made that requirement, and so using my definition, a real figure who was later renamed Jesus would fit. Jesus was also given the name Emmanuel, which means God with us. This only appears in the birth narrative of Matthew and is taken from Isaiah and was not a common name at the time. None of Ireland's 2,625 men were called Emmanuel. It therefore seems pretty unlikely as his birth name. Another question is, although Jesus is a cratylic name, how uniquely cratylic was it? Would other names that were common at the time have been equally cratylic? therefore making it much more likely that a cratylic name would be given by chance. Here are Ireland's 15 most common male names with their meanings. So several of these would have been fairly cratylic for a saviour figure, including Joseph, meaning God shall increase, Eliezer, meaning God helps, John, meaning God is gracious, Ananias, meaning graciously given of God, Jonathan, meaning God has given, and Matthew, meaning gift of God. Together with Jesus, these made up 37% of men bearing the most common 15 names, which makes a coincidence rather more likely. I'm sure, however, that you will agree that of these reasonably cratylic names, Jesus appears to be the best fit. But there is more. Another possibility is that the meaning of the name Jesus as Saviour has arisen as a consequence of the Jesus story rather than predating it. Languages have become richer over time with more words expressing more shades of meaning. Modern English has a comparable richness to modern Hebrew, but both are much richer than ancient Hebrew. Crudely, modern English has more than ten times the number of words as ancient Hebrew. This means that single ancient words typically map to multiple modern words, so that a range of different but related translations are possible. So while there is no doubt that the origin and original meaning of the name Jesus predates the first century, 
its exact translation could easily have been influenced by the story. Now the list of names and their meanings that I previously showed was a little disingenuous because I picked out the most cratilic translation of Jesus. Actually, there are several possible translations, including my help, a cry for help, a cry for salvation, salvation and God saves. Furthermore, the meaning of the word salvation in English has been significantly influenced over the centuries by the Jesus story, and this may have led to a convergence between the meaning of the word, the way in which Jesus is translated into modern English, and the Jesus story. If the less cratilic translations of Jesus are taken, then my previous statement that Jesus was the most cratilic of the 15 commonest names in Judea at the time is no longer true. That means that the odds of him having an equivalently critilic name purely by chance rises considerably, as 37% of men bearing the most common 15 names would have been equally cratilic. This would still be a coincidence, but not so much of one. So do biblical mythical characters have critilic names? This is more difficult to answer, because we have no data set comparable to islands for characters that we know were mythical. Nevertheless, there are certain Old Testament characters who are now thought to have been mythical, or at least whose historicity is more widely disputed than that of Jesus. Most agree that Adam and Eve did not exist. The name Adam has a complicated meaning. It is derived from how he was created rather than his destiny or character. The name implies his origin as the original man. Similarly, Eve's name obliquely describes her origin as the original female. Neither of these are quite cratilic as they describe their birth processes rather than what they were like or what they did, but their birth process was their defining characteristic. Similarly, Moses, who many argue did not exist, does not have a cratilic name, but rather one based on events surrounding his birth. Moses means he who draws out of the waters. Noah means rest, which is not obviously cratilic, but could be related to refuge from flood waters. Moses, in fact, would have been a more cratilic name for Noah. Abraham is another character who may or may not have existed. The name means their strength or their protection, which is a little more cratilic, but still general rather than specific. Isaac, Abraham's son, means laughter, and he was so named because his mother Sarah laughed at the idea of conceiving at her age. So again, he was named after events surrounding his birth, rather than cratilically. Daniel's existence is also disputed, though historicity remains the mainstream view. It means God is my judge, or God rules me, which is cratilic, but only in a general rather than a specific sense. These are just a few random examples, but we do not get a strong sense of a Hebrew habit of giving specific cratilic names to mythical characters. So the critilic argument is far less compelling when applied to the case of Jesus and ancient Judea than it is when applied to modern English society and fiction. In the end, I consider that it does indeed favour mythicism, but on close inspection it is far more marginal than it first appears.